At the foundation of Vajra Yoga are the three principles, renunciation or to be free of samsaric existence, compassion and altruism of investing in the happiness of others, and wisdom of emptiness and seeing that there is no intrinsic reality. Baked into these basic principles is the realization that we are all connected through our actions and our words, our beliefs, and through our subtle bodies. Vajra Yoga recognizes this connection through the synthesis of a practice influenced by Hatha Yoga and Vajrayana Buddhism and the ways in which they come together to express this innate connection. Beloved spiritual teacher Ramdas was a true Vajra Yogi in how he synthesized the practices of different traditions. And Baba Ramdas once said, the basic institution is the individual human heart. No bureaucracy will turn earth into heaven, but the human heart, your heart can do it. It takes only one heart to start the whole chain. True revolution is the evolution of consciousness. Vajra Yoga is teaching people to experience expanded physical and subtle body awareness for the benefit of all beings. Vajra Yoga aims to turn the suffering of others into compassion and love through consistent practice and commitment to the path. And ultimately, Vajra Yoga means to find connection among spiritual friends because there is no perfection without connection. The spiritual community is the future. The Sangha is what will save us. As Sitnat Han said, 2,500 years ago, Shakyamuni Buddha proclaimed that the next Buddha will be named Maitreya, the Buddha of love. I think Maitreya Buddha may be a community and not just an individual. A good community is needed to help us resist the unwholesome ways of our time. Mindful living protects us and helps us go in the direction of peace. With the support of friends in the practice, peace has a chance. Deep reverence and gratitude for Thich Nhat Hanh as a teacher and hopefully as a prophet in this regard. It is really my personal belief that a large part of the issue in today's world filled with violence and war and injustice is an imbalance of masculine and feminine principles. Overvaluing of hierarchical systems, scarcity-based thinking, abuse of the natural world and Mother Earth, and now our focus and worship of gore oriented action has brought the masculine and feminine out of balance in our world and therefore has also brought us out of connection with each other. To bring the masculine and feminine principles back into harmony, things rooted in feminine energy must be emphasized. This includes importance given to the collective, to the community, to the sangha, rather than to the singer, singular overseeing ruler or teacher. And we must focus on and believe in abundance rather than scarcity. Time spent in nature will connect us with the feminine and practicing listening to our intuition will put us in tune with our inner wisdom and subtle body in a society that unconsciously hands over their self-authority to politicians and doctors and even spiritual teachers who act as demigods, resulting in disconnection and even distrust of not only our unique physical experiences, but also our divine subtle body and subtle realm experiences which often go denied and repressed because of lack of context and container in which to explore their meaning and symbolism. And many of these concepts are rooted in cultural conditioning, which can be incredibly challenging to overcome because these templates of belief are rooted deeply in the unconscious mind. But overcoming conditioning and rewriting these neurological and spiritual pathways is possible with practice and devotion to the path. As these templates of belief dissolve with the practices of Vajra Yoga, we not only change our minds, but we change our karma or our evolutionary path as well. It's as if we can't heal the world because we're trying to heal it on the physical level. Just as an energy medicine, the more subtle the field you heal, the more permanent the healing. So as Vajra Yogis, we need to raise our own vibrations of our subtle bodies and give up the toxic thoughts and templates of belief. It's our duty to teach people that they are multidimensional and teach them how to heal their own subtle bodies. And through this work, we can heal the collective subtle body. And once we heal the collective subtle body, then the physical world can also heal. 
People are walking around and don't even know they have subtle bodies. And people are teaching yoga and don't talk about subtle bodies. Just like my parents never wanted to tell me that I had sex organs. We need to teach subtle body awareness to heal subtle body and then to hopefully heal the world. So through the experience of our multi-dimensional nature with Vajra yoga practices, we can realize our innate interconnectedness. And once we realize this, it becomes obvious that when we practice yoga, we do it not only for the benefit of ourselves, but for the benefit of all sentient beings. And I want to end by expressing gratitude for the teachings and for the practices and gratitude for all of my teachers. And of course, the utmost gratitude for the Sangha. Om.